This is ABC7 Los Angeles. 60% of American adults have gum disease. The American Dental Association says most people would rather risk losing a tooth than get gum surgery. But as health specialist Denise Dodor reports, a new FDA cleared laser alternative may get more people into the dentist chair. How are you doing, Linda? You feeling anything? Uh-uh. Good. Today, Linda Drexler is doing great. Yes, she has gum disease, but at least she doesn't have to go under the knife. She's taking advantage of a newly approved laser, which means no cutting, no stitches, and hardly any downtime. So the patient is back to their daily routine, back to work right away. They can come in on their lunch hour and resume their daily activities. Gum disease is when the gum and bone erode and teeth become loose in their sockets. I was losing bone and I did not know that either because of, uh, you know, this gum disease. Lynette Little is one of a hundred million Americans who has gum disease. Symptoms include bad breath, red or swollen gums, bleeding when flossing or brushing, and a change in the way your teeth fit together. Left untreated, the bacteria in the mouth can travel through the bloodstream and cause heart attack and stroke. It's even linked to premature deliveries. Each year, 30,000 of us undergo painful gum amputations to treat it. But now many dentists are offering laser periodontal therapy. This procedure does for dentistry what Lasix has done for people with eye problems. Periolase selectively destroys disease tissue and heals as it treats. Dentists say it also helps promote bone growth. The best part for patients is the ease and convenience. In the new way, you can walk out the door and it's like you just came to the dentist's office for a checkup. I mean, it was just such a breeze. And with this new laser treatment, it's less likely that a reinfection will occur. In Sherman Oaks, Denise Tudor, ABC7 Eyewitness News. With the vast majority of the population having some form of gum disease, it's not surprising that dentists commonly recommend periodontal treatment to their patients. Deep pockets, especially with bone loss, requires immediate attention. Common recommendations by dentists include deep cleaning, scaling and root planing, and gum surgery. Statistics by multiple dental resources report that only about 4% of patients needing gum surgery actually follow through with treatment, usually because of fear. People are concerned about, if not downright scared, of conventional treatment options, and they're looking for an alternative. As featured on news channels and newspapers, periodicals, and dental journals around the country, specially trained laser dentists are providing the no-cut, no-sew, no-fear laser alternative for the treatment of periodontal disease. Using the Millennium Dental Technologies Periolase MVP7 Dental Laser, they successfully and comfortably treat patients with periodontitis so they are able to quickly return to their daily routine. So many people need help and they're looking for a better way, especially because it's not just about your teeth anymore. People with periodontitis are at increased risk for heart disease, stroke, complications with diabetes, and spontaneous preterm births, to name a few. Laser Assisted New Attachment Procedure, or LANAP, is quickly becoming the gold standard for the treatment of gum disease. Dr. Don Bluer, I'm here to do your periodontal consultation. That's great. I heard that you have gum disease and you were told that you need gum surgery and you're looking for an alternative. That's right. I know you've probably been told about what gum disease is, but if you don't mind, I'd like to review that with you so I can, I can talk about your periodontal treatment options and especially why people are choosing laser periodontal therapy as their periodontal treatment of choice. Okay. Let's take a look at this picture chart. This is a picture of what a healthy tooth looks like. This is what you see when you look in your mouth. That's the tooth. This is the root. This is the bone. And the gum lays over the bone and attaches to the tooth just above the bone level. Between the gum and the tooth is a pocket or a space. We measure that using a ruler. We call it a probe, which is in three millimeter increments. We measure between where the gum attaches to the tooth and the top of the gum. In a healthy situation, those pockets are very shallow. Really, we'd like to see them at three millimeters or less. In this picture, we have a healthy two millimeter pocket. What happens is the bacteria that's naturally in our mouth sticks to the teeth and lives off of the food that we eat, producing this white filmy stuff. That's called plaque. Plaque is soft, we can brush it and floss it away, but we're only human and we're gonna miss some of it. The stuff that we miss is usually down below the gum line and in hard to reach areas. 
What happens is the bacteria that live inside of the plaque irritate the gums and the gums get a little bit puffy or inflamed. And what we have is some surface inflammation. This is called gingivitis. Most people have some inflammation or gingivitis going on somewhere, if not everywhere, in their mouth by the time six months rolls around since their last cleaning. That's why we recommend that people with gingivitis get their teeth cleaned twice a year. What happens if plaque sits there for long enough? Eventually it turns hard into barnacles of calculus or tartar, same thing. Now the bacteria that live inside those barnacles will eventually destroy the attachment between the gum and the tooth, opening up a deeper than normal space or pocket. In this picture we see a five millimeter pocket, allowing the bacteria to then start attacking the bone too. When we have attachment loss and bone loss, this is called periodontitis. This is no longer a surface problem, it's a problem going on down below the gum line, deep below the surface. And so a regular surface cleaning really doesn't do the trick, it's just the tip of the iceberg. Now the problem with deep pockets is they're harder to keep clean than the shallow pockets are. In this picture we have a six millimeter pocket and more bone loss. Now the issue here is if we have a six millimeter pocket and the gum started up here, and we have two millimeters of damage at the surface, we really have about eight millimeters of attachment loss. The reason why the gums recede is that this very inflamed tissue is easily damaged when you chew and brush your teeth. In this picture, we have an eight millimeter pocket, a lot of bone loss, and a whole lot of recession here. Recession is very common for patients who have gum disease, but it doesn't always occur. The big concern with periodontitis is as the pocket gets deeper and you lose more bone around the tooth, the tooth can actually become loose and you can lose a tooth or teeth as a result of the disease. Let's take a look at this picture while we're talking about some of your treatment options for periodontal disease. Basically we have three. Conventional periodontal treatment includes scaling and root planing, otherwise known as deep cleaning, osteosurgery, otherwise known as gum surgery and laser periodontal therapy, otherwise known as LANAP, or Laser Assisted New Attachment Procedure, the first and only university researched and FDA approved laser periodontal treatment, requiring a specific laser and patented protocol to achieve it. Okay. Let's start with scaling and root planing. Basically, with scaling and root planing, it is a deep, aggressive cleaning. You're numb during the procedure so that we can get down to the bottom of the pocket and do a real thorough job cleaning the tooth. Now, the problem is that we have very limited access to get down to the bottom of the pocket. And we can't see down there, so we're basically working by braille. So we're likely going to miss some of the calculus, especially in the deeper pockets. Even in conjunction with the use of medication, we don't expect to see a strong fibrous reconnection or any bone improvement. If after scaling and root planing, a deep pocket persists, the next conventional treatment option is to do gum surgery. Basically, if we still have a six millimeter pocket and we cut the gum here and take this piece away, we've left about a two millimeter pocket behind. The goal of gum surgery is to create shallow pockets with the hope that we can slow the progression of the disease process. Basically, it's the intentional reduction of the height of the gum, which doesn't look pretty and leaves the roots sensitive to temperature and more prone to getting cavities. The problem with periodontitis is that most people don't find the treatment options appealing. And unfortunately, there is no cure even the laser isn't a magic wand. Like diabetes and high blood pressure, we can get you to a healthy level, but then we need to work to maintain you there with regular and frequent cleanings. Once a periodontal patient, always a periodontal patient. You can be treated, but it requires maintenance to keep you at a healthy level. And if you've had gum surgery and we've already cut the gums, if after some time a pocket comes back, well, we can't keep cutting you, eventually we run out of something to work with. Now the difference between gum surgery and laser periodontal therapy is basically the difference between treatment by amputation versus treatment by regeneration. With laser periodontal therapy, there is no intentional reduction of the height of the gum. Now we use the laser initially between the gum and the tooth to kill bacteria inside of the pocket, which remember is the source of the problem. It also affects the calculus, so it's easier to remove. And we're removing this diseased lining on the inside of the pocket, 
without damaging the healthy fibers that live underneath. The laser can see the difference between healthy tissue and diseased tissue, and it can see where the bacteria is and specifically kills those as well. Now we have better access to get into the pocket and do a better job removing the calculus from the surface of the tooth. We use ultrasonic instruments that vibrate the calculus off the surface of the tooth and flush it out with antibacterial irrigation. We then use the laser on a different setting, killing bacteria again, and creating my super duper blood clot, or what I like to call my biological band-aid, that keeps high concentrations of bacteria and debris out of the area. Now this seals the gum up against the tooth. We haven't killed every microbe of bacteria forever, and we haven't sealed the gum up against the tooth forever, but we've created a clean, disinfected, closed and stable environment for the body to be able to kick in its own natural defenses. There's a little war going on down here. The bacteria against your immune system, and unfortunately you're losing the war. When we use the laser, we are tipping the scales in favor of regeneration versus degeneration. If you think about it, we have the ability to build ourselves back. We can grow fibrous tissue, we can grow bone. That's why we don't amputate a broken arm. Good thing. Mm -hmm. But we only do it under the right circumstances. If you think about it, we have a cast on a cleaned up, disinfected arm so that the body has a chance to grow back. Well, the problem is the mouth is a dirty, unstable place, but with the help of the laser, we can create that closed, disinfected environment so that the body has a chance to kick in its own natural defenses and start to rebuild. In order to stabilize the area, we need to find any areas where you might be hitting your teeth together too hard or inappropriately. And once we find those areas, especially in the spots where your pockets are very deep, you have a lot of bone loss, or the teeth are loose, we need to spot grind them away. Then we leave the area alone. We don't want to mechanically disturb the area, don't want you to chew on it. You're on a soft food diet for about a week and we want you to follow special cleaning instructions. Now you're not on a soft diet because you won't feel like chewing over there. We just don't want you to disturb the area. Now we don't go back in here and reprobe the area for about nine to 12 months after the treatment is done. That doesn't mean we're not seeing you during that period of time. After everything is done, we'd like to see you back a month after for surface cleaning and to reevaluate the healing. And then it is the recommendation, standard recommendation for periodontal patients that you have your teeth cleaned every three months to keep yourself healthy and maintained. It's the best insurance policy that you could give yourself because we don't want to have platinum calculus and the bacteria that live inside it start to destroy these new attachments that are starting to form in the pocket. They are more easily destroyed than what you had when your teeth and your gums were healthy. Now we can't grow everything back that you had before, but we are consistently finding new fibrous attachment and improvement in bone quality, if not quantity. We just can't guarantee how much and where. We do routinely see pocket depths reduced by about half. And by comparison with conventional periodontal treatment, we see patients with less pain, bleeding, swelling, less reduction of the tissue height, less downtime, less re recovery time, and a much greater overall patient satisfaction, and if I might add, much greater doctor satisfaction, <laughs> providing a, a very effective and wonderful treatment to the many patients who need it. Do you treat the whole mouth at once? We can treat the whole mouth at once, or we can treat you in halves, where we treat the right side, and then quickly thereafter, treat the left side, and a week after that, make sure everything is healing well. A month after everything is done, we want to see you for a surface cleaning and to make sure that everything is healing properly. And then you're here for your regular three-month cleanings indefinitely to make sure things are under control. Is this going to hurt? Well, during the procedure, you're numb, so you're not going to have any pain. After the procedure is done, you'll feel like, yeah, I had work done today, but you're not in agonizing pain. Usually an over-the-counter pain medication will keep you comfortable. Certainly, by comparison to conventional gum surgery, patients are surprised and very pleased. Are some people more prone to get gum disease? Yes, even though the direct cause of periodontitis is a bacterial infection, how you react to the presence of that bacteria is influenced by many other factors. There's a strong hereditary link to periodontitis. It may run in your family. Things like 
overall health, nutrition, stress levels, smoking, history of dental care or lack thereof, all play a part in how you respond to periodontal disease. Does this cost more than regular gum surgery? Typically, no. The costs are about comparable to conventional gum surgery, sometimes even less, considering that oftentimes scaling and replaning needs to be done prior to gum surgery and needs to be paid for, whereas with laser periodontal therapy, we don't require scaling and replaning to be done first. Does my insurance cover any of this? Typically, we can get some insurance benefits towards this procedure. We'll just have to look at the details of your plan, and we'll let you know. My gums don't bleed, my breath doesn't smell, and I can smile without embarrassment. My teeth have never felt better. Your laser surgery put me on the fast track to a better life of healthy teeth.